it's our very first section, 7.1, Chapter 7, Techniques of Integration, 7.1, Integration by Parts. Okay, let's see what we've got here. We've got a pretty cool integration technique, lots of examples. Uh, pretty much this whole lecture is, um, you know, me introducing the technique, and there, there's a formula that goes for it, and then just a ton of examples. So let me show you a couple of situations we will be able to tackle once we have this down. Uh, we will, by the end of this section, we will be able to do integrals of things like x, e to the 3x dx. Right now, uh, if all we have to work with is the fundamental theorem of calculus and u substitution, that would not do it. We would not be able to perform that antiderivative. We'll also be able to look at things like the natural log of x divided by x squared dx. And, of course, many other examples to come as well. Okay, so here is the idea. This is the explanation of the concept behind the formula that we're going to use. Uh, imagine you have two functions. We'll call them u and v. They are both functions of x. Okay, so we will begin by looking at the derivative with respect to x of u times v. Okay, so the derivative d over dx of u times v, well, that's a product of two functions, right? So we need the product rule. So you might say that it's u times the derivative of v and we will represent the derivative of v as dv over dx plus the derivative of u du over dx times v. Let me actually get my camera down just a little bit. I think that will make things a little bit larger. Okay, that's better. All right, so we have this product rule here if these really are functions of x. So what are we going to do with that? Uh, it's this pretty clever sort of manipulation. So we just took a derivative. Now let's take integrals. And you might think, well, this is kind of strange. Okay, but it's going somewhere. All right, just hold tight. So we'll take an integral of the left side with respect to x. So integral there, dx. Same thing over here, integral of that entire right side, dx. You think, well, what's the point of this? We're going to think of it as canceling here on the left side. So the integral and the derivative cancel out. But on the right side, we're going to do a little something different. Think of breaking this into two separate integrals. OK, so here's what comes next. On the left, it's just canceling out and going back to u times v. But on the right, we're going to think of the integral of this part plus the integral of this part, and then, you know, think of the dx like distributes there, right? The integral distributes, if you will. So we have this integral plus this integral. Now, kind of something convenient about our Leibniz notation, dv over dx times dx, these dx's cancel out. Same over here. And so we're going to think of this a bit simpler. uv equals the integral of v du plus the integral of... Did I read that correctly? Let me start again. uv equals the integral of u dv, that's correct, plus the integral of v du. And so back here... You know, there's a subtlety here and what's happening. So here our differential was the x, dx. Now our differential is the v and the u. Um, but that's okay. That'll It will work out that way. Now what? You're like, okay, big deal. So, okay, I, I don't see the point of this. Let's isolate this part right there, right? This is an equation. These two sides are equal. This is the sum of these. So we could subtract this to the left side. Um, although I'm going to write the integral of u dv on the left and think, OK, well, that's uv minus the integral of v du.
that is our integration by parts formula. That's what we need to be able to take the integrals of those examples at the beginning. How you say? Okay, let's do it. I realize. Hold tight there. Aha. In order to not reveal my work too soon, I needed this separate piece of paper. Okay. Let me just do that, and we're ready. All right. So we're going to start with that first example. Integrate part A. Integrate x e to the 3x dx. Okay, let me write that formula again. It went integral u dv equals u v minus integral v du. And yeah, you're going to need to memorize this formula. You're probably going to be using it so much it's going to stick just from the repetition. Okay, here's how this works. The problem that we're looking at, think of that as the left side. Okay, so when we see this, we should be thinking that's u times dv. And in fact, in this problem, you see my underlines there. This is what we're going to do. We're going to say u simply equals x. And the rest of this, e to the 3x dx, that is dv. So when we see that integral, u times dv, and th uh, these are the associations we're going to make to start this one. Now, if you're thinking, how did I know to make the x of u and e to the 3x dx dv? OK, so that's part of the challenge of using integration by parts is how to identify that at the beginning. But I'm going to share some insights into that. And we're even going to try it a different way and see that it won't work and why it doesn't work if we were to try something different. But for now, just to see how this plays out, just go with me. OK, so, um, so what is the right side here? OK, so based on the fact that u equals x and dv equals e to the 3x dx, we're going to figure out, OK, well, then what is v? We know what u is, right? So we can just plug that in. What is v? We need that twice. And then what is du? So that's what I've got over here. And I'll just show you my work. So the first parts at the top are just repeating. We're saying u equals x. And we're saying dv equals e to the 3x dx. So what is du? That's the simplest way to begin. Well, if u equals x, then du simply equals dx, right? Most people probably think of this as taking a derivative. Truthfully, you're taking a differential, the differential of u and the differential of x. But that's a technicality, a meaningful one. OK, and then over here, ah, now this one we have to work backwards. If dv is e to the 3x dx, then we need an antiderivative to get back to v, right? Derivative here, antiderivative there. Technically, it's an antidifferential. If you really want to be uh, rigorous, we'd say it's an antidifferential, not a derivative. OK, so what's the anti? derivative or anti-differential of e to the 3x dx. Well, uh, there's a you could think of this as a u substitution, but it's a rather simple one. If we were to take the derivative of e to the 3x, we would have to multiply by 3, right? Because of the chain rule. But this does not have the 3 in front. So there's got to be something here, and we need a 1 third. So when we take this derivative, that 3 multiplies down, cancels out with the 1 third, and we get this as our dv.
already we're seeing, you know, uh, you know, for some of us, that's a challenging antiderivative, you know, and maybe back when we were taking Calc 1 and it was all fresh, that was okay. But now that it's been some time, like, how do I do that again? <laughs> but I think we'll, hopefully you'll get up to speed pretty fast because we're going to be doing these a lot. Okay, perfect. We've got all four parts. So I'm going to plug in what we need for the right side here in the formula. I've got my u, my v, then we need the v again, and then du. So here is, here it is as uh, the right side, if you will. Let me get rid of that equal sign. That's kind of uv minus integral v du. x times one third e to the three x minus integral one third e to the three x times dx. And we've got it all to fit. You think, hmm, okay. By the way, I wrote this u, v, v, du, really for lecture purposes, to make it really clear. You don't have to write all of this u, v, you know, u, d, v here. You don't have to do that when you're doing problems. I would just need to see this kind of out on the side. This is just to try and make it really clear for note-taking. Okay, what are we going to do with that? Well, part of it's already done, right? You know, this part's fine. Maybe we can clean that up a little bit. Then the question becomes, can we perform this new integral here? And yeah, we can do that. 1 third e to the 3x dx, sure. So here is our final answer. Uh, this one we're rewriting a little bit neater. 1 third x e to the 3x minus, hey, if we do another antiderivative, won't we just need to multiply by one-third again? Like really in the same way here, well, if we go again, then it would become one-ninth e to the 3x, and then plus c out on the end, because, of course, it's, it's an indefinite integral, right? So there's our final answer. We, ha we, d we did it. Now, maybe you're a bit skeptical and you're thinking to yourself, can we just kind of sit on this question before we do another one? Because I'm still trying to wrap, wrap my head around it. And I think that's a, a great idea. Um, part of the way to wrap your head around it is to check your answer. And then we're also going to try and get this antiderivative by choosing the u and the dv differently. Okay. Let's check our answer. Is this really the antiderivative? This all seems like some magic or something. I don't trust magic. Well, you'd be wise to do that. Yeah, it's not magic. Uh, let's check it out. And I just kind of wrote it all here. Got a little breeze going on this afternoon. Okay, um, let's take the derivative. I, I left off the plus C because we know that's going to be zero. So just the other pieces, 1 third x e to the 3x, sorry, my writing's a little sloppy, minus 1 ninth e to the 3x. If we take that derivative, do we really get back to this right here? Well, let's find out. Derivative, well, we would need a product rule for this first part, 1 third x e to the 3x, right? So that'd be 1 third times e to the 3x plus 1 third x times 3e to the 3x when we do that product rule okay. minus and now this derivative is got the chain rule uh, that would turn back into 1 third e to the 3x and what do you notice hey doesn't this term cancel out perfectly with this term and then even here 1 third and 3 cancel out and all we're left with is x e to the 3x. Yes, that derivative really does get us back to where we started. Wow. That's pretty cool. Okay, now let's try it from a different angle. Same example, but choosing the u and v differently. Okay. 
try a different choice of U and DV. So got this set up again. And now what I've done, I reversed the positions uh, just to make it really clear. So I put the E to the 3X first and then the X DX second. And so we're going to say U DV. Obviously, these things are being multiplied. So you don't have to rearrange them. And we're going to see that in more examples later. But just for now, let's put that in front. U, this second, DV. It's the same integral, of course. We're going to follow the same formula. Okay, so I've got that out over here. And, you know, at first it seems like everything's fine. I'll give you a hint, though. Turns out this is not going to work. Okay, so we're taking u equals e to the 3x, and dv equals x dx. All right, so we need a derivative here for du. No problem. Derivative of e to the 3x is 3 e to the 3x dx. Derivative this time. Don't mix that up. Derivative, antiderivative. Now, if dv equals x dx, antiderivative is 1 half x squared. And again, like these derivatives, they, they, all of these things were simple when you were first learning them in Calc 1. Maybe by now, though, you're like, what, how does that go again? What's the antiderivative of x? <laughs> oh, yeah, it came from x squared, so the 2 needs to multiply by a half, 1 half x squared. Okay, right. All right, now let's plug these into the right side of our formula. And again, for some reason, I don't like these equal signs. I'm just kind of, all right. How's this going to go? Well, there's u times v, okay, uv, minus integral v du, e to the 3x times 1 half x squared, minus integral 1 half x squared times 3 e to the 3x dx. And maybe something about this is like kind of tipping you off. Ah, uh, maybe something's fishy here. And if you get that, you get that feeling, well, that's a good thing. It's like you're a spider sense telling you something's up. Okay, what, what's my note here? You might have seen this flash a second ago. All right, over here, we're just going to clean it up in the front, right? So maybe put the one half in the front. So usually we write the x squared before an e. And my writing a little small. All right, 1 half x squared e to the 3x, fine. Minus, here, I'm going to pull out these constants, 3 and a half. So uh, 3 over 2 integral x squared e to the 3x dx. And you're like, well, what's the big deal? Hmm, all right, look at this integral. I mean, the constant is, is no big deal, but just look at what's happening here. And you see my note. We're now going to have to perform the integral of x squared e to the 3x. You think, wait a second. The original question was just x e to the 3x. And now it's x squared e to the 3x. This is getting harder. This is getting more difficult. It's getting worse, more complicated is maybe, uh, more complex is maybe a good way to describe that. That's a harder integral than even the original. Okay, that means you're on the wrong track. You're going the wrong way. Stop everything. The choice for u and dv, if it's getting harder, these must be backwards. Okay, let's compare that to the correct way we did it a moment ago, back here. Done correctly, and you know, you don't know you're doing it correctly when you start the problem, obviously. But when you do do it correctly, look at this integral. Easier or simpler. Let's say simpler. That's better. Easier is not the right word. Simpler than the original. We're on the right track. And we definitely know it there because we're just one step away from the answer. But if you find yourself getting more complex or harder than the original, stop everything, something's off, go back and fix it. Okay, well, we only got through this first example here in our first video. 
Um, lots more to come.